Hello, hello, hello. This is Warren Redlick. I want to start talking about the Tesla Q3 investor report, earnings call, and earnings report. Got the report. Actually, my Twitter feed, where I can sort of refer to. I, I was live tweeting is the right term, but as I was going through the slide deck, the shoulder deck, and as I was going through the earnings call, I was posting on X some of my thoughts of what I was taking away from that. And I just wanted to share that with the YouTube audience. Um, just you know, what I'm seeing here, this is the first thing I look at. I, I'm focused, you're gonna hear a lot of voices talking about margins. You're gonna talk, hear a lot of voices talking about earnings per share, cash numbers. There's a whole bunch of things you can talk about. I'm not a short-term guy, I'm a long-term guy. I'm looking at what does this mean for the future of the company. So the first thing that grabs me is they're predicting greater than 125,000 in production capacity for Cybertruck um, now, which is pretty surprising. I, from the what they said in the earnings call, I don't think, uh, hi, Matthew, I don't think that their production capacity is really 125,000 yet. They're only in pilot production. They're in pilot production of semi, and they've been in pilot production of semi. They don't even have a capacity number listed there. That, there's a difference. Cybertruck is in pilot production in the factory where it's going to be built in mass production. Semi is in a smaller facility. They're just testing out manufacturing of, of Semi and they're building a new factory or they're going to be building a new factory. For Thank you, Mark and Jim for, um, yeah, I did see the audio problems on their screen. Um, my audio cuts out intermittently or their audio cuts out intermittently? I'm not sure what you're referring to. Uh, there were audio cutouts in the Tesla things call live stream. I don't, I don't think I'm having any uh, streaming problems that would cause me to have. So uh, a thousand cyber trucks in 2023, maybe. I don't know what the number is going to be. I'm less worried about that. Like I said, I'm not focused on short term. But you know, this is pretty promising. And I think during the earnings call, they said that they should hit a production rate of 250 thousand a year, early 2025, about 18 months from now. 18 months from start of delivery is going to start on November. That's actually my previous post. Let me find that. That's my previous post here. Uh, deliveries are going to start November 30. Can you guys see that? Yeah, deliveries. They, they posted a delivery event November 30th of 2023. So Elon was saying 18 months from that date, which would be first half of 2025, they're hoping to hit a 250000 a year vehicle production rate, which is honestly, from my perspective, pessimistic on the future of Cybertruck. I think Cybertruck can deliver a million vehicles a year. So only 250,000 is kind of low. I don't know if he's sandbagging or if he's being, you know, just trying to be realistic. Um, also, when you talk about problems that they taught, my audio is not steady. Uh, yeah, William, that might be you. I'm not hearing that from anybody else. So oh, I, I think the audio is fine. I don't know. So let's get back to Cybertruck. You know, I don't think there's any other changes in numbers. Here, I think Model S and X production capacity is on 100,000. Uh, Fremont's Model 3 and Y at 550,000. True bag. Uh, Shanghai is in the ballpark of a million units a year. Um, Model Y Berlin, I think 375,000 was the number before. There's a concern. It seems like Berlin, thought Berlin was going to go to 500,000 units a year. I think they may have decided to cap Berlin at 375,000 a year for now. I think the labor costs in Europe of having a third shift, of having like a late night shift, are just so high that it doesn't make sense for Tesla to produce and, and that level of volume, that the efficiency loss. From what you have to pay workers to work that late um you know a bunch of people saying audio is cutting in and out i don't know what's going on. i'm seeing it from tom collins and i'm seeing it from william are, are the moderators having uh audio issues cutting in and out i don't, I don't know what's happening there um 
what am I seeing? Let me, I'm looking at my, my audio input capture and I'm seeing good audio. So I'm, I'm going to keep going. From what I can see from my software side of things, the audio is fine. So unfortunately, I can't know what's happening in the stream. Okay, so then you've got Texas at greater than 250,000 units of Model Y. I think that this number will reach 500,000 for Model Y in Texas. So if you're looking, um, you're probably more than half Model Y uh, in Berlin. You're probably, in, whether you're 500,000 here, 300,000 there, 500,000 Model Ys in Texas. Um, and Berlin, 375,000. So, you know, Model Y probably approaching 2 million units a year eventually. Uh, and definitely some people experiencing bad audio. I can't, I can't explain that. I'm not getting, I'm not seeing problems on my end. Um, so I, I don't know what to tell you about that. Okay, so uh, I think that covers that. Then we will see Semi. You know, they, they have to build a new factory for Semi. Next generation platform going to start in Texas. There would definitely talk about uh, it's long distance. That's right. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. As far as I can tell, everything's okay. So uh, next generation platform, you know, we're, we're going to see that in, in significant production in 2025, probably not in 2024. Roadster may be coming. You know, Elon is definitely laying some caution down uh, about Giga Mexico, about the, the market for vehicles. Um, Yeah, okay. But let's not worry about the audio. I'm just going to go ahead and unfortunately, if it's an issue, I am recording this. And if it turns out it's really bad, then I'll just repost the video with the recording and probably some, some minor editing. So, um, you know, there's another key point here, which is when you're looking at the short term over the next 12, 18, 24 months, Elon repeatedly expressed concerns in the earnings call about interest rates. I actually just checked before I went live what percentage of new vehicle purchases in Mexico, which would be the primary market for Giga Mexico, what percentage of vehicles in Giga Mexico or in Mexico are purchased with financing. And it was about 60% according to one source. So if that's a prime, I think that's the reason why you know, the, the, the Latin American market is poorer. So so delivering the next generation vehicle is going to go to Latin America if they're struggling with interest rates, if they're struggling with economic problems, then it might not make sense to focus on the Latin American market right away. We did see, by the way, that Tesla has opened sales in Chile. So there is some effort to expand to just Tesla into Latin America. I blame the audience. The audio problems are obviously Gary Black's fault. <laughs> Gary Black is jamming this, this transmission. Either that or it's Hamas. I'm not sure who. Um, okay, yeah, and the key, good point, Mark Potopsik. I am going to get to the, the financials uh, briefly in a minute. Um, well, but again, I'm not focused on short term, I'm focused on long term. So let's get to some more of what we learned. Uh, okay, so I want to, this is, this is a definitely a shot at short term growth. What we're seeing is we're expecting the Model Y production rate in Texas to grow very gradually. If we go back to this chart, we've got Texas. Let me roll that up just. A if we if we look at this, we're looking at Texas at greater than two hundred fifty thousand, expecting the production rate to grow very gradually. That that sounds like not grow much. So, you know, will Model Y get to Model Y is not getting to five hundred thousand units soon, um, and they're ramping additional supply chain needs in a cost efficient manner. They are looking at the, you know, Elon was very clear towards the end of the earnings call that he's very concerned about the global economy. We've got multiple wars going, we've got high interest rates, we've got high interest rates driving up the cost of buying a car. It's harder and harder for people to buy cars. This is a problem. Um, um, it's harder and harder for people to buy cars. This is just a serious issue. So. We do not expect a meaningful increase in weekly production rate in Shanghai. Um, similar to Texas, production, further production ramp of Model Y will be gradual in Berlin. These numbers are not going to grow much for Model Y. So Model Y is already the best-selling vehicle in the world. 
<clears throat> we expect it will be the best selling vehicle in 2023. It will probably be the best selling vehicle in 2024. But <clears throat> you know, if Model Y sells, let's say, 1.3 million vehicles in 2023, maybe it gets to 1.5 million, 1.6 million in 2024. I think long run, the potential for Model Y is larger, like you know, 2 million. Um, but that's only when interest rates come down and it becomes more, and they get cost down, it becomes more affordable. Yeah, the Tesla Nair t shirts at elonbits.com. Thank you, Mark Potashnik. Um, elonbits.com for the merch and uh, stainless steel water bottle, elonbits.com. So, um, Bill says, How about meet Kevin? I don't, I don't follow Kevin anymore, so I don't know what he's saying. Oh, is he jamming the signal? Maybe. Peter Rollins said, Oh, I. I could do, I, sh I should probably do a whole nother live stream on Lucid Motors, but let's, you know, I, I find basically like people ask me about Lucid all the time. When I make videos about Lucid, people don't watch them anymore. There's a core dedicated audience that wants to follow the, the train wreck. But honestly, most, most people are no longer interested in watching Lucid Motors videos. So I don't really expect to make many more Lucid Motor videos. But I just want to hit, hit this here. Tesla is being very, very conservative in their growth forecasts. And I think I have... I have another bit up. Let me see if I can find it. I, I wanted to just talk about my, my notes here. Vehicle production growth for Tesla will be slow in the next two to three quarters. And this is not a problem if you are a long-term investor. Setting the stage for what will be in the long-term rapid growth of Cybertruck, second half of 2024 and especially 2025, where by mid-2025, we should see Cybertruck at 250,000 units a year. That's going to contribute to growth. Still, we're not going to see Tesla growth, and I got more coming about this. Tesla growth is, is going to be relatively restrained for the next 12, 18 months. The next generation vehicle is going to completely change the game. That's what's coming. Thank you, Colin Cleveland. This costs more than a lucid. Is it below five dollars a share? Thank you, Colin. Uh, it turns out I thought I still owned lucid stock. Apparently, I sold it. I don't remember when I sold it. So. Uh, this was a detail that I was a little surprised at. This is from the slide deck. Um, Cybertruck will adopt an 800 volt architecture. I would swear at the Tesla Semi event, they said they were using a thousand volt architecture for Semi and they were extending the thousand volt architecture to Cybertruck. Now it appears that Cybertruck has an 800 volt architecture. For context, the current generation of Tesla cars use a 400 volt architecture. By going to higher voltage, it allows you to reduce the number of amps, the current. That allows you to use thinner wires. That reduces the weight of the wiring. So there's a variety of advantages. I think there may be other advantages to going to a higher voltage. Going to a thousand volts would be a step better. Um, but I think the jump to 800 volts is a big jump in the first place. And I'm not sure that the jump to a thousand volts is that big of a deal. So uh, this leads to the question, will the next generation vehicle use an 800 volt powertrain? And when I was listening to the earnings call, I think it cut out, but I think I heard them say that the next generation vehicle will not use 800 volt powertrain. Uh, yes, not your mom, I can see you. I don't know why you think you're shadow banned, but yes, not your mom, AKA BM, Rica, Pura Vida, um, I can see you. Um, I'm concerned about Macro. Yeah, Elon is very concerned about macroeconomics. I mean, but to the point where he described himself as having PSD from past experience with macroeconomics. Okay, so let's go. Okay, I have some criticism uh, on rare for me, I guess, uh, some criticism of some of their uh, reporting here. They report that their cost of goods sold per vehicle is down. Cost of goods sold per vehicle is down in three versus two two. And it's from 30, under 38,000 to about 37,500. So it's a pretty small drop. When you look at Model S and X deliveries in three, it was a big drop. Model X, Model 3 and Y dropped a little. Model S and X dropped more. And since Model S and X are the highest cost of goods sold in Tesla's fleet, I think this entire drop, I'm not talking about for the, the drop from back from Q4, but the drop from Q3 to Q, Q2 to Q3 I think a lot of that can be explained just by the shift of the mix from S and X to three and Y. I don't know how much of that. And there was talk, I'm probably going to hit this later. There was talk in their earnings call about 
all the things that they're doing to reduce cost. I'm not saying that this isn't true and that they're not long-term reducing cost of the, of the goods sold in the vehicles, but this one particular quarterly change, I'm not sure how much of that was driven by the shift in next versus the other thing. I don't think there's, I, I'm telling you that I'm looking at what I'm seeing on my own audio. My own audio software is showing it's fine. So it, and I'm guessing this is a YouTube problem. I, I, I'm, I'm literally watching my audio meter going and, and I'm not seeing any clipping and I'm not going up into a range where I would get. So I, I don't know how to explain what's going on there, but we're, we're going to slog through it and figure it out later, I guess. Um, okay. So talking about Kager, this is about growth. Um, and this is going to be hard to read. Maybe I can make this bigger. Um, context is important here. I'll, I'll read this and then I'll, I'll make this bigger in a second. Um, for 2023, we expect to remain ahead of the long-term 50% CAGR with around 1.8 million vehicles for the year. So Tesla, that, that would require, by the way, I did the math, that would require Tesla to, to get 1.8 million vehicles delivered. Tesla would have to deliver 476,000 vehicles in Q4, which would be a record. It would be higher than Q2 was a big number. Q2 was around 460,000. Uh, I think it's achievable. Now everything is freezing. I'm not, I'm not, like I said, I'm not getting any warnings. I think, I think we're doing okay. Am I, must be a YouTube problem. I don't know. Um, Tesla is starting. So I think that the 50% CAGR, when Tesla says they're going to achieve that, Tesla is starting from 2020. 2020, Tesla delivered 500,000 cars. A 50% CAGR from there would be under 1.7 million vehicles in 2023. And Tesla will fall. Tesla will fall slightly behind. Tesla falls slightly behind the long-term 50% CAGR in 2024, which would, in order to go from the one point under 7 million vehicles in 2023, adding 50% to that would get you to 2.5 million in 2024. And I don't think they're going to reach 2.5 million in 2024. My guess is they're going to do 2.2 or 2.3 million in 2024. And then... 2025, you're going to have Cybertruck delivering maybe 250,000 units, and you're going to start seeing the next generation vehicle, and hopefully the economy bounces back. Maybe Model Y goes to 2 million units. So there is some, there's a lot more hope for 2025 than there is for 2024. But then again, in 2025, you're going to need to get to 3.7 million, get your Kager. I really think it's 2026 when the next generation vehicle starts ramping or is, is in the process of ramping. Model Y is humming and hopefully the economy is better. That's when we start to get back a path of, of going ahead of 50% CAGR. But I, I do think for 2024 and 2025, we're going to fall behind the CAGR curve. That's, that's a prediction. Let's see if I can make this bigger. You can read that. You're planning to grow production as quickly as possible in alignment with the 50% CAGR target we began guiding to in early 2021. Some years we may grow faster, only some we may grow slower, depending on a number of factors. For 2023, we expect to remain ahead of the long-term 50% CAGR with around 1.8 million vehicles per year. So in some years we may grow faster and some we may grow slower. So I think 2025, 2024 and 2025 are going to be slower growth because of the economy and because of a variety of other reasons. That's just, just realistic about what we're seeing in the economy. So, go back here. Up. Okay, the big story is CapEx. Show this to you. The big story is CapEx. CapEx grew from about 2 billion a little over 2 billion to nearly 2.5 billion, 2.46 billion per quarter. And it had been like a steady state around 2 billion. Maybe it was growing slightly. Maybe it was 1.85 billion. And then it went up to 2. Let's see if I can pull this up. Uh, yeah, I think you guys can see it. So I can see it. I don't know if you guys can read it. So it was 1.8 billion in. Of 2022, 1.86 billion in for 2022 went up to 2.07 billion in Q1, 
2.06, so it didn't actually increase in Q2, and now you have this jump to 2.46 billion. So it's a $400 million jump in the quarter, which is um, the previous increase was you know 200 million over three quarters. So this is a big jump in CapEx. I think this is more than they predicted in the previous statements about what they expected CapEx to be. If that continues, that's a, a pace of 10 billion a year in CapEx, which I think they were saying seven to nine billion in CapEx. So uh, I think that's partly buying the, the, the new chips from NVIDIA, the H NVIDIA, all the, they're, I forget what they're called. They're, they're, I can't think of the name of it now. NVIDIA's chips. There's an, a G chip and now there's an H chip and I forget what they're um, they bought like 10,000 units. They're making a supercomputer out of that. They're making Dojo. Um, I think this may include uh, upgrades to the factories. You know, is this going to continue? Or are we going to see that CapEx continue? That, that matters. CapEx matters a lot because CapEx drives growth. The more you spend on CapEx, the more you grow. So during a high interest rate environment, we believe focusing Oh, okay. During a high interest rate environment, we believe on focusing on investments in R&D and capital expenditures for growth while maintaining free, positive free cash flow. It's the right, is the right approach. Year to date, our free cash flow reached 2.3 billion while our cash and investments petition could Let me go back to that. I think I need to fix this. Oh boy. All right, let's see. Okay. So, um, down, no, it's not on this page. Um, I think they're up to, is this it? Is this the cap? That's cash, cash equivalents and investments. They're up to 26 billion in cash. This number here, the very bottom in the pink, 26 billion, over $26 billion in cash. That's up from 23 billion, which was up from 22.4 billion. If you go back to Q3 of 2022, they're up basically $5 billion in cash compared to a year ago. So from a short-term perspective, at least, that's a good sign from a long-term perspective. It means Tesla has a lot of runway. If there's economic problems in the future, which seems likely, Tesla is ready for the storm, the way Elon put it. Um, this is another detail. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this visible. Um, for Tesla Energy, this is this is one of those things that's like a real game changer. If you can understand, let me see if I can. Uh, slide deck. Up the slide deck. Okay. Hey, down. Way down in the okay. Challenge sheet. Okay, here it is. Statement of operations. So statement of operations over here. You guys probably can't read this, but energy generation and storage revenue is up to 1.56 billion. And this was the big number here. 1.178 billion is the costs of revenue, the cost of the energy. Which so the the energy revenue is up, the energy uh, costs are down. That is a big deal. That is a big deal. I, I want to stress why that's a big deal. So energy gross margin is approaching 25 percent. Auto gross margin was like 17 percent. So that's a big deal. That, you know. And, and energy is growing, and, and we expect that energy may double in 2024 versus 2023. That may be a little optimistic, but there's a good chance energy doubles. So if energy doubles while margins are growing, and let's say gross margins and, and energy goes to 30%, these are speculative numbers, just to be clear, these are speculative numbers. But if revenue goes from you know, a pace of $6 billion 
energy revenue goes from a pace of six billion for the year to a pace of twelve billion for the year, it starts to become a significant impact on Tesla in terms of not only revenue but profit. Yes, Kaiser Trip, I've 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 had multiple concerns expressed about the audio. I don't know what the problem is. As far as I can tell, my audio is fine on my end, and it must be a YouTube thing. And I'm not going to stop the stream. You have the H100 GPUs. Thank you. The A100s and H100. Thank you. Um, so. This is a this is an important deal. If you are focused on Tesla Energy and you say, "Wait a minute, okay, Lathrop is going to reach their full capacity at some point in the in the near future. It, Shanghai is building a mega factory that's going to grow. You're going to see multiple mega factories appearing. If they're able to grow their revenue dramatically over the next five years, and they're able to get gross margins of thirty percent or more, then that's a game changer for Tesla's long term revenue and profit. You know, it's not. It's not as big as FSD, but FSD never happens, but energy grows like that. That's big. This, this matters a lot. And I think that Megapack is less sensitive to interest rates. Um, I think it's still, I think energy is still sensitive to interest rates. And we're seeing that solar deployments are, are flatter down because of interest rates, making solar deployment not cost effective. But Megapack's story is so compelling. And even with high interest rates, people are buying it. No, utilities are buying it. Okay, so let's move on here. So I'm not going to play this, but this is Drew Baglino talking. And uh, short story is it was a 4680 update. I posted this video, uh, a video of this on X already. Um, we're seeing massive improvement in 4680. 40% quarter on quarter growth in cell production on line one. Line two is the cyber cell line, which is 10% more efficient. They are rolling cyber cell into line one. They have a total of four lines that they're going to be deploying. So, whatever rate they are producing at, they're growing that rate by 40% and a quarter. Now, that may slow a little bit. But they're going to go from one line of significant production to four lines of production. And they said that they're, they're making the investment and the 4680 lines to build an additional four lines. So whatever you're doing on one line, you're going to 8x that. And they've got a next generation of 4680 that they're working on in the Cato Road facility in Fremont. So... Uh, there's a lot of good 4680 news in here. There was a question about it from the investors. Drew had obviously prepared an answer. It looked like he was reading his answer. As I listened to it, it sounded like he was reading off a sheet. Um, but, you know, we're seeing a lot of significant improvement in 4680. They're bringing online soon cathode production facility in Texas and the lithium refining facility in Corpus Christi, Texas. You know, that, I think the lithium refining facility will take a while. But as they incorporate those improvements, I think that actually ends up improving the cells. Um, I don't think Giga Mexico is blocked. I think it's just a choice. Um, start to talk. The audio often cuts off the first word, then starts up, not your mic or your software. When I start to talk, I, I'm still not seeing it. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at what I'm seeing in terms of my software, and I, I think we're doing fine, but I don't know. Uh, I, I may have to update the software or something. We'll figure it out. So uh, let's keep let's keep rolling. That's unfortunate. At some point, the, just a little quote here. At some point, the robots will manufacture the robots. Just Elon being cute. And then uh, Elon was talking about how FSD is baby artificial general intelligence, baby AGI. So I joked that that's Elon's rapper name. Um, <laughs> A little bit more humor here. Elon said that AI progress is like a bunch of stacked log curves. It's like my dating life. I go on a date, the next date gets better, then the third date kind of tails off and flattens out, and then I have to get a new date. I have to find somebody else to date. So uh yeah, I don't I don't I don't feel like that's working out. Uh other little details. Cybertruck will have 14 inches of travel in its suspension. That sounds like a really big deal to me. I'm trying to wrap my head around more than a foot of suspension travel because I have a Model X Plaid. I think it has two or three inches of travel in the suspension, and that's noticeable. When you go from low to very high, 
it's noticeably higher, but like 14 inches of suspension travel, that seems like a lot. Uh, that's going to be uh, very, very interesting. With some talk about manufacturing of Cybertruck versus manufacturing of the next generation vehicle, it sounds like there's so many different features in Cybertruck that it's more complex to manufacture. The expectation for the next generation vehicle, and this is one of the places where the audio cut out, the, ex the expectations for the next generation vehicle are it won't be as difficult to manufacture as Cybertruck because, for example, it doesn't have 14 inches of travel and a suspension. And I think they were saying that the next generation vehicle is going to be more utilitarian. It's going to have less features. It's not going to be overkill on life. Um, yeah, Cybertruck's going to have an air suspension. I'm pretty sure of that. Uh, Jim Whitehead says, I wonder if the bots are far enough along that they could pound down. Pound what? Pound down tiles and do a roof without falling. I don't think you pound the tiles down. I think you attach them. Ride them on. I, 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 I have been a big advocate for Tesla bot for solar roof installs, but we'll see. Um, yeah, and I don't think Giga Mexico is blocked. Giga Mexico. I'm not sure the Drew Baglino fan club t-shirt sell on landbits.com mark. It didn't sell. When something doesn't sell, I take it off. Um, the four toils off the ground. Uh, mark, I wasn't talking about Japanese girls. I was talking about American girl dating life, actually. Um, FSD never gets, he was, Elon was saying FSD never gets tired. It never gets distracted. It never gets drunk, hopefully. And then cost reduction in Tesla is like a game of pennies. There's a really good description in here of um, cost reduction at Tesla. Um, and I, I made my own little, made my own little graphic uh, capture it. But cost reduction, oh. Game of Petties instead of Game of Thrones. So they really kind of went in depth. They said if a $40,000 car has 10,000 parts, then each car, each part is $4, right? Or at $4 times 10,000 parts, you get $40,000. So if you can reduce the cost of each part by 40 cents, then you've reduced the cost of the car by 10%. So they're just constantly chasing. And they said sometimes it's like digging a tunnel with a spoon you're constantly looking for ways to save a penny here, a penny there, you know, maybe getting rid of a QR code sticker that it turns out we were anyway. And, you know, everything, you know, every little change like that, you know, and then if the, if the QR code isn't working properly and it stops the line, then it actually ends up costing a lot. So that's, you know, the constant search for everything. So game of pennies, uh, I, this was from Dolly using chat GPT. Got, um, uh, replacing the game of Thrones throne of swords with a, a throne of pennies cyber truck or sorry model s uh front just for the heck of it dolly i thought dolly did a pretty good job there that was not bad uh let's see if we have anything okay and then yeah really quick i'll i'll tout my i'll pump my book i published a novel shelby hits the fan it's on amazon can order it for free on Kindle right now. I think there's another day or so that that motion is going to last. Um, it's a, apparently a two-hour read, and it's it's climbing the bestseller lists on Amazon as a two-hour read. So please uh, download it for free, read it, write a review if you like it. If you don't like it, maybe don't write a review. Uh, but message me if you if you have any thoughts on the book. Um, my first novel. I have a nonfiction book I'm going to do next, and then I have two other novels in the pipeline. And if this does well, then I'll I have equal in mind, actually two sequels in mind. I have a three book series in mind for this book, and this book does feature, among other things, quietly, not overwhelmingly. There is a Cybertruck chapter. Um, there's Tesla Solar. There's Tesla Powerwalls. There's Starlink. There's some AI that sneaks in. Uh, mostly, the book is not about the technology, but the technology plays a supporting role. Um, so I think if you want to see how Cybertruck could play into fiction, how Starlink and Solar and Power Walls can play into fiction, this is post-apocalyptic fiction or apocalyptic slash post-apocalyptic fiction. It starts before an apocalypse. Shelby and Matt live in Florida. I think the first chapter, which you can read for free, you know, even if it's not free, you can read the first chapter for free and look inside the book. Um, I think the first chapter will give you like a, yeah, I want to read the rest of this book after you read the first chapter. Oh, good question, Matt Burns. Did AI write the book? So it's my story. The first eight chapters I wrote on my own about five years ago. 
Um, I used ChatGPT to help me edit the first eight chapters. And then actually, the first chapter is pretty much what I wrote. Um, the first three chapters are pretty much what I wrote. As you got farther into the book, I used AI a little bit more for help. Later chapters, um, I, you know, AI, ChatGPT helped me write some scene descriptions, dialogue. And I also used an AI called Anth uh, Claude from a company called Anthropic, which is employees of OpenAI who left to start up their own AI company because they didn't like the path that OpenAI was on. Um, and so Claude actually can read the whole book. The book is about 20,000 words. Claude can read the whole book and give me intelligent feedback. And I used an AI, I don't know if it's really an AI, I used Grammarly to help with grammar and, and things like that. Um, did you think Elon got emotional when talking about people working from home? Yes, I do. I do think Elon got emotional about that. Um, yeah, I completely agree. He was not thrilled with the laptop class, the professional managerial class. I, I remember that during the great uh, health crisis of, of, the, of the early 2020s, when friends of mine who had jobs where they could work from home were you know, talking about how they were not going out and how people should stay home, but they were ordering in the food. Their groceries were being delivered. They were having food delivered to their homes. Like, how do you think those people are doing it? Um, I only read Jane's defense. Yeah, Elon definitely got upset about people working from home. Um, I did not order the cyber beer. When will Model Y update happen? Um, I think there already has been like slight Model Y updates. The thing is that Model 3... Of course, let's be clear. I got Model 3's refresh wrong. So to be blunt, you know, hey, don't don't give me too much credibility when I talk about Model 3. But, um, you know, I think that, there, that Model Y didn't need as many improvements as Model 3. There is some talk that there will be some updates on Model Y. Um, and they specifically refused to answer when the up, updated Model 3 is coming to the United States. They were asked that question in the explicitly refused to answer that question. Um, audition TMU. I don't know what TMUS is. I know what this is. Tesla bot for waxing the car. Wax on, wax off. Bots for mining landfills, recycle materials. Uh, I don't know why we're talking. I'm not going to engage in a conversation about some other stock. I just wanted to talk about Tesla. So uh, let's go into the slide deck. Shareholder deck, just really quick. Let me just see if there was something in here that I. This is the update. Yeah, so I mean, you can see that auto gross revenue, auto revenues are down, total revenue is down. Um, they don't list it here, but energy revenue, oh, energy generation and storage revenue was up, not very much. Uh, services and other revenue was up, but not very much. But, you know, auto revenue is down significantly. Total gross profits down. Uh, total gap gross margin was down. Only a little, actually. Gross margin fell less than I think a lot of people expected. The earnings per share was down on another. Um, free cash flow, positive free cash flow of $840 million. The, the total cash piles up to $26 see earnings per share. I think this is significantly lower than estimates, so the stock is probably down. I, I haven't looked at what the stock did. Let me very quick what the stock did. Stock is down after market significantly. It, it fell 5% during the day, and it's, uh, you know, after market trading, which I don't place a lot of weight on, it's down in the low 230s, but I, I, don't, I don't tend to worry about after market trading. So, you know, people focused on earnings per share are not going to get it. That's just, that's the market we live in. Um, this is where you have the CapEx being up. CapEx is up to 2.46 billion. There's, I don't know that there's much going for. Let's see, profitability. Revenue is impacted by growth in vehicle deliveries, growth in other parts of the business, reduced average selling price, negative foreign exchange impact of $400 million. Uh, operating increase income increased year on year to one billion in Q3. Operation income decreased seven point six percent operating margin. 
Operating income was primarily impacted by reduced average selling price due to pricing and mix, uh, which I think again is, is reduction in SNX sales. Increase in operating expenses driven by Cybertruck AI and other R&D projects. Okay, so they're, they're actually accounting for Cybertruck operating expenses, AI and other R&D expenses in the operating expenses, which surprises me because they're not actually delivering Cybertruck yet. I'm surprised that that's an OPEX as a CAPEX, but it is what it is. Um, cost of production ramp and idle cost related to factory upgrades. So there was a big hit this quarter, and there probably will continue to be a hit next quarter because of reduced production because of the upgrades they did, particularly to Model 3, but they apparently did upgrades to Model Y as well. Um, negative foreign exchange impact. On the upside, there was some growth in vehicle deliveries. Uh, lower cost per vehicle and IRA credit benefit is, is starting to have a positive impact. Gross profit growth in energy generation and storage as well as services and other, and growth in regulatory credit sales. Okay, so well, let's... Really shocking here. See, actually, get, um, get here. Storage deployed is only almost four gigawatt hours. That's a record. Not that much higher than Q1, but it's higher than Q2. And if you look at the pace, the, the two quarters at the beginning were 2.1 billion, 2.1 megawatt gigawatt hours, and 2.4 gigawatt hours. So to jump to a steady over 3.6 gigawatt hours is a big positive. And you know we're going to start seeing numbers in the four gigawatt hour and five gigawatt hour range, uh, especially into 2023. That's 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 important. Um, superchargers are up. Tesla locations are up. We're seeing a lot of improvements in a lot of areas there. My favorite chart, I covered this thing. You see Cybertruck at 125,000. I think we talked about the rest of this page already. Um, this is big for people who are in the FSD that we're seeing a big jump in FSD miles driven. And we're going to see that continue to grow. Kind of a neat thing here. Let me see. In the second paragraph there, vehicle and other software. Um, I thought this was significant. This is just an example of where Tesla's just better than other car companies. Um, all Tesla rentals through Hertz in the US and Canada now allow Tesla app access, allowing renters to use Tesla's lock, unlock by a phone key, remotely precondition the cabin, track charge status, and more. Customers who already have a Tesla profile will have their settings and preferences sleeplessly applied making the rental car feel like their own. Think about how big of a deal that is. Compare that to every other, you know, the rental car fleets are filled with Fords and, and Chryslers or Rams or whatever, all these vehicles, Toyotas, that you're stepping into a completely new car that you're not familiar with. And you step into a Tesla at a car rental and it's like it's your car. And everything is already calibrated to you, it's already set for you because it knows your settings on your regular car. Um, I think that's a game changer in terms of car rentals. I don't think it's a big long-term story because RoboTaxi is going to dominate that story, but I think that's just a positive. Um, oh, this is where they mentioned the 800-volt uh, architecture. High-voltage powertrain ar architecture brings notable cost savings. So energy storage deployments increased. Um, there's something I don't think I mentioned. So... The ongoing ramp of mega factory in Lathrop towards full capacity of 40 gigawatt hours with the phase two expansion production rate improved further sequentially. Increased. So their production grew, their deliveries didn't grow that much. They talked in the earnings call about how um, mega, pack, mega pack deliveries depend on are they in transit or are they being delivered? So I think they're kind of saying you know, Q4 is going to be slow because probably a bunch of mega packs are going to be in transit to some project. Um, but I think when we're heading into 2024, I think you're going to see that grow more because if they're producing more and they're delivering as much as they can produce, then we're probably going to head to four and five gigawatt hours a quarter uh, soon. And, you know, ultimately we're looking at 10 gigawatt hours a quarter when they're fully ramped, which is not necessarily that far away. So, you know, going from four gigawatt hours to 10 gigawatt hours is a pretty big jump. And with 30% gross margins, that's Not sure where they are on the Shanghai factory. Did they mention here? They didn't mention the Shanghai factory in this spot. I don't think they talked about it in the call either. 
did say pay for use supercharging remains a profitable business for the company, even if you know, capital expenditures. Our team is materially expanding, focused on materially expanding supercharger capacity, further improving capacity management, and anticipation of other OEMs joining our network. So, you know, going out into 2025, I don't think you're going to see a lot of other vehicle manufacturer vehicles using Tesla superchargers in 2024. But definitely when you get into 2025, you're going to see more of these other EVs. I think that's a big um, they're planning to grow production as quickly as possible. I think I covered that. Hager, Ample Liquidity, um, Cybertruck deliveries on track for later this year. Um, there were questions from on X. Somebody was asking about what, how many Cybertrucks do you think they're going to deliver in 2023? Which is, you know, there's like going to be, they're going to start delivering on November 30th. I think they'll be lucky to deliver a thousand units. In 20, um, and then as they ramp, you know, at some point they're going to get to a thousand a week. That'll be you know, a month or two in. By you know, by March, by the by early April, maybe they're at two thousand units a a, a week, two thousand units a week. Well, if they're if they're hoping to get to one hundred twenty five thousand units a year, that's a little more than two thousand units. So it's going to be a while till they get there. Uh, uh, Jim, I'm less I'm less sanguine about Meet Kevin's predictions. I think Meet Kevin famously got uh, a certain cryptocurrency company wrong. Um, he'd be wrong about that, but I think he got that wrong. Nice picture of semi towing cyber trucks in front of a Tesla building. That's this is the Mega Pack factory in Lathrop. This is the Shanghai team delivering the uh, producing the million of Y. Pretty cool. Uh, Starts, financial statements. I think that's all I have for you today. So, off the screen, uh, let's check on the chat before I wrap up. Kevin noted that cap spending was indicated they're building Ford and GM are cutting back EV. Yeah, I mean, so Kevin gets some things right. Um, I don't hate Kevin. I just, you know, I think that uh, I'm not sure his analysis is, is, I don't think he focuses on Tesla enough. I think he's, all over the map and what he talks about, you know, those of us who are Tesla junkies were just focused on Tesla. Uh, oh, that somebody paid 200,000 for a cyber truck. I thought there was a bit of $400,000 for a production cyber truck, the production cyber truck. Okay, well, um, I just wanted to thank everybody for watching and uh, 11 a.m. here and I'm late for my, I'm late for getting to the gym. I'm an hour, over an hour and a half late to the gym. I'm going to go hit the gym and get a workout, and it's cardio day today. If you're, if you're not going to the gym, I'd encourage you to start and, uh, you know, make sure you're watching what you eat. Um, you know, you can build guns like this. I'm actually really improving the size of my arms. I'm, I'm making progress on all that. Um, and I still haven't gotten my weight where I want to get it, but I'm, I'm doing okay. And, yes, Kevin got really duped on altcoins. That's, that's, a, that's a polite way of putting it. Um, Maybe he was paid this as a sponsor. I don't know. I'm not sure. Was he paid as a sponsor? Yeah. So thanks everybody so much for watching. Uh, T-shirts, stainless steel water bottle at eatfits.com. I'm going to do a video coming up. Um, again, I want to pump my book. Please go to Amazon. Look for Shelby Hits the Fan. Uh, please, free right now. Please check it out. And then, um, I. I up with an idea for a new video. I have a video coming very shortly about the Boring Company and a critic of the Boring Company in Bastrop, Texas. And I have another video that I was working on today, like the concept with a friend of what, how I think Toyota can actually become relevant for VB. That video is coming probably in three or four days. I'm just guessing. Uh, I may turn the impossible into late. We'll see. So thanks, because <laughs> it may be impossible for Toyota to survive in the future, but I think it's possible. So thanks so much for watching. Please support me here as a YouTube channel member on the X platform, formerly known as Twitter, as a subscriber there, uh, on Patreon, at Daily Lie at warrenredlick.locals.com. Any support's appreciated. Um, again, Jim, thank you for checking the book out. If you uh, like it, please post a review, say nice things, and uh, we can see if we can sell more. I, we're, I'm over 100 already in like two days. Over 100 people have downloaded the book. But like I said, it's free right now. 
another day or so of the free promotion that Amazon put together. Go so check it out. Uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, uh, Joe Justice has not responded to me very much, uh, so I don't know that I'm going to get him on for an interview anytime soon. I'd love to talk to him. If you know Joe Justice, you know, tell him, hey, you should do an interview with Warren. I'd love to talk to him. Thanks, everybody.